Hi, I'm Alex Archbull, and I've been buying and selling antiques since I was nine years old. From basements to scrapyards, I'll look just about anywhere I can to find lost antiques and collectibles. And sometimes I'll go big and buy everything. With my wife and kids, we run an antique shop in Edmonton, Alberta, Canada, filled with some of the most unique items we can find. I never know what's going to happen or who I'm going to meet. This is our life, this is our adventure, and this is Curiosity Inc. From home, honey. Well, hello, everybody, and welcome to today's episode. It is a rainy, cloudy kind of day, and thank goodness there's rain because we haven't had some in a little while here. Grass will green up, everything will be better, and I'm out in the ambulance today, and that means I'm on a pick. And usually that means I'm buying a lot of stuff. So, um, this is a three ambulance load kind of day today. I've got to get the stuff in the back dropped off at the store, go back for at least two more trips today and tomorrow, uh, and unpack and show you guys what I got. It is probably one of the most remarkable and weird collections that I've ever picked up. Stay tuned, see what's in the back. I have the first three of probably five loads moved over to the store. And some people might say that I overdo things. Well, I think you might be right. There is so much stuff that came in, we actually have to close off the back area of the store because until I get this all sorted, inventoried, and over to the auction, you just can't walk back here. Now, what's inside the boxes? All kinds of extremely detailed monster dioramas, and they're huge. They're absolutely huge. There's my hand. There's how big these things are. Um, this is one of many that we have, and you can kind of see it looks like a tunnel going off down the, the way there, and these little mole men are digging away. Collecting mushrooms from the looks of things. Oh, they're just farmers. They look scary to us, but they're just farming. Well, I have a whole pile of monster action figures and toys and collectibles and X-File things. I don't know, there's all sorts of stuff in here. So much so that we're gonna do almost like a little mini museum on the top here, but I have to get them all out of the boxes and on display. That's a job for tomorrow. The next morning I needed to bring the big guns with me. <laughs> I said, are you feeling strong today? And he's like, it's early. <laughs> um, you still really don't know what we're getting, do you? No, I do not. Okay, well, you'll th I'm pretty sure you'll think it's cool. But this is going to require a couple trips. I've got the uh, ambulance emptied out, ready to go. Uh, let's go knock on the door and see if we can start loading up. Okay. The detail is just amazing on these kits. I'm going to have to drive very carefully to get these back safe and sound. Okay, let's close up very slowly. Make sure that nothing uh, gets knocked over. Oh, hang on. Let me just slide this down. Okay. After unloading the vehicles, this is the mess that I'm left with. All these boxes have to be sorted. All these little monster dioramas have to be put away. And there's certainly not room in my store for all this stuff, which means it's going to be headed, a lot of it, to the auction. To figure out what's going where, I have to start opening boxes and start sorting what's inside. First box I opened up had an original 1987 Ooh. Kenner Predator, Predator still in the package. Pretty cool collectible toy from an iconic movie. Um, the next box was all high-end sideshow uh one six scale action figures i guess is what you'd call them collectibles so they're all zombies military guys a freaky looking santa the box is packed full and these things can be several hundred dollars new each and there's a box full of them the other box i just opened up here all real toys we've got vincent price in a very fancy looking robe from the raven uh, we've got Angel, Texas Chainsaw Massacre, so all horror and monster themed stuff. So I'm going to have to figure out um, what is going to stay and what is going to go because I can't fit everything here at the store, um, like I said. So I think this box will probably end up going to auction for sure and probably a lot of these guys too. More high-end figures from Sideshow Collectibles. We've got Dark Shadows. 
person remembers that. There's more Vincent Price, Buffy the Vampire Slayer, um, Aliens. There is a pile of cool stuff in here. <laughs> I cannot even imagine how many figures are going to be in all these boxes, but we're going to keep digging, see what we can find. And these are incredibly detailed, too. I don't know if you've seen these things before. They're like the size of a G.I. Joe figure. Going through all this monster and alien and Twilight Zone Outer Limits kind of stuff in this box. And there's a random Wayne Gretzky. And a Dennis Rodman who comes with his uh, jersey and also a glittery top and cutoffs. Um, and his alternative uh, sunglass and green hair. <laughs> Bad as I want to be, Dennis Rodman. That's kind of an odd thing. Um, looks like there's also a Muhammad Ali figure in here. Just really quite a variety. Aside from the monster stuff, there's a few little other odds and ends in here that are just kind of neat too. Well, I'm going to keep packing, keep getting stuff ready for sale at the auction house and uh, try and wiggle my way down through these boxes here and make a path again. You know you're getting into some slightly older collectibles, like this Independence Day Supreme Commander, when the uh, surprise gift that comes along with it is a floppy disk. <laughs> Computer Adventure Mission Disk inside. Well, first you have to find a really old computer, I guess, but that was such a good movie. Will Smith. Fully posable, and that's pretty big too. This has got a date from 1996. Yep, 1996 getting on there we've got uh blackbeard terminator boy just a ton of cool stuff including this 1990s um endoskeleton terminator too he's not working probably needs new batteries but pretty cool this would have been uh fairly expensive toys back in the day you know 20 30 years ago and this is a japanese sakuda hobby jumbo limited figure one six scale terror dog from the ghostbusters franchise Never even seen one of these before. This early Japanese import stuff can be quite rare and collectible. Who knows what's all, what else is going to be residing in the rest of these boxes, but got to keep organizing. Okay, now here's a cool piece. Um, all the original Munster figures, one 12 scale, so they're really big. You know, 12 inch. Grandpa, and I assume we're going to find Herman. Oh, there's some loose figures in here too loose guys hanging out in here. Planet of the Apes? No. Don't know what you are. Not cool though. There's Herman. <laughs> With a couple extra faces. <laughs> the friendliest Frankenstein ever. Well, that's a neat set. And if they're all there, which it looks like they are... That is a very cool set. There's only one normal person in their whole family. Only one normal person in the whole family, and that's Marilyn. And there she is, just with a purse and a hairbrush. You know, I, that's kind of funny. They just put sort of an average girl in with that family. <laughs> that's a, a cute concept. Anyway, uh, I guess I'll get these guys ready to go to auction. I really like these. I'd probably hang on to these for the shop, but... The goal is to sell as much as we can sell, so even the fun stuff has got to go out the door. Digging and digging and digging, and look what I found. Bob Hope, G.I. Joe, the 12 inch. There he is, telling jokes to for the USO. And we've got uh, JFK's PT-109 boat commander toy with the sunglasses, gun, hat, and uh, replica of his rescue message. This was a really rare piece. This is a 1984 Sakuda Hobby Jumbo Terror Dog model kit, complete with the instructions and everything. Really, really rare piece. Um, don't know if I'll put that one through the auction. I might hold that one back. And we've got a couple fun little guys here. This is from Sideshow Collectibles. It's the Invisible Man. But I see him right there, but that's only because he's wrapped in cloth. So there's the Invisible Man. And we've got the Hideous Sun Demon. Ooh. Look at the graphics on that though, isn't that cool?
I've been working pretty much non-stop to get all this stuff put away and I'm about ready to show you guys what it looks like. In the meantime though, the mailman popped by and brought me a little box from one of you who's watching at home. Now I opened the box up upside down and there was a letter at the bottom, but what I found inside was a whole bunch of vintage 1980s Hot Wheel cars. You can tell they're older because they've got the black wall tires. On the slightly newer ones, um, they have different looking wheels. That's a, probably a matchbox, that one. Um, but yeah, some of these would date back to probably the 1970s or early 1980s. This is probably more of a 1976 era. Baja van and the 280ZX. So lots of cool, fun stuff. And so I read the note and uh, it was just a nice little gift that, uh, that they sent us. So, you know, really, really appreciate that so, so much. So was it all worthwhile? Was it worth spending a week of my life to get just a few things? Well, you guys can be the judge of that. Let me show you what I got. This collection comprised a ton of hand painted, artist painted. This isn't come from the factory this way. This was done by a uh, studio, a company that does special effects. He had them hand paint and make all these little statues. But the thing I was really excited about was the dioramas. This the Phantom of the Opera, and you've got the actual sort of um, liquefied water in there. Uh, you've got the, the terror that lies like, he's just trying to sing, lady. And here she is, she's like, no. And he's like, just never mind. I'm gonna play you a song. Um, the, whole, the whole detail on this is just fantastic. The organ, um, the little cobblestones, tiny little rats, real rope. The attention to detail was just amazing. I mean, look at that. It looks just like a scene right out of a movie, but there's more. My store has been overrun by Frankensteins and zombies and all sorts of critters, but check this out. Um, this was a really neat piece here too. This is a gypsy caravan. And see, there's the uh, the old gypsy lady and she's put a curse on this fellow. And he's saying, what's happening? And he transitions into a werewolf. Hear that? Even a man who may become, who pure in heart and says his prayers by night may become a wolf when the wolf bane blooms. Anyway. I just thought the detail was so cool. That that caravan is actual wood. These are uh, 12 inch figures, so they're quite large. Just really, really neat detail. And check this out. I got all of these little sort of monster displays and figures, all highly articulated, very, very detailed. Um, you have this from the spider person to uh, Vincent Price over there, just being his creepy usual self. And that's from the house on Haunted Hill. And um, then you get into these dioramas and check this out. Frankenstein, Dr. Frankenstein in his laboratory with the monster. Of course, that that's not Frankenstein. You guys know that, that's not Frankenstein. That's Frankenstein, that's Frankenstein's monster. Anyway, so he's like, I'm out of here. <laughs> Something's going on. But look at the detail in this laboratory, in this laboratory with all the little gears and switches and uh, torches on the wall and you know his surgical tools and here we see it kind of move forward well Frankenstein's alive now and look uh, or Frankenstein's monster is alive and there's he's got a lady friend now and she's like what's going on really really cool this was one of my favorites I'm gonna start over here where it starts so we see it's Egypt there's a backdrop there with the camels and somebody's been digging there's tunnels and there's a hole so what happens when we go through the hole uh oh something's going on in there you get inside and look, there's your explorer and they've come across a terrible sight. They've awoken the mummy and he's coming after him. There's the sarcophagus opened up. The mummy is clearly crawled out of. Um, just beautiful detail. Again, look at that. You, you would think that looks like almost a still from a movie set or something, just how cool that is. The little plaster that they've chipped pieces off and painted just very, very nice attention to detail. Better than anything I've ever really seen before. And we come down here, there's Dracula. And it looks like he's been busy. They've been necking. <laughs> uh, so he's got his victim there. And another lady in the window. Here we have a whole Dracula situation going on. He's taking a baby in his castle down the stairs. A scared lady, or actually she might be a vampire herself, judging by the blood. Her lipstick, excuse me, ma'am, your lipstick is running. You best do something about that. Here, wipe, wipe your face with this cross I've got. Maybe that's what's happening. And she's like, no, no, I'm good. I got it. I've got some Kleenex in my pocket. And he's like, no, no, I insist. This wooden cross will clean up that lipstick, no problem. But uh, all the action and detail in here, 
And uh, never trust a lady who looks like this. You know, no, don't take those ladies home to meet mom. They're, they're up to no good. The coffin, <laughs> authentic dust. <laughs> and this poor guy, he's lost his arm to uh, Frankenstein's monster. And he does not look happy about it. Oh, I see it was a uh, prosthetic arm lost previously. These are all scenes from movies. Anyway, super cool. There's Quasimodo up there on the bell tower with the maiden below. Such a neat collection of stuff, the likes of which I've never, ever seen before. The other thing that was really cool is this guy right here. Look, it says Dr. Jekyll on it. And it's got all, all this little formula, his Hyde formula, his notebook. You know, there's pain relievers, like fake medicine. Let's hope it's fake. Cotton balls and stuff and a syringe. And it says that this was custom built by artist D.W. Smith, a Raven Wing production 2006. So this was a custom built thing with a certificate of authenticity. But how cool is that? Good thing my friend Bob the Bottle Man isn't here right now. He might try drinking this Hyde formula and then only Lord knows what would happen next. You've seen what I got at the store. I have a look at what I brought down to the auction. Rows and rows and rows of action figures, everything from monsters to G.I. Joe Yeti. Who knew? Um, we brought down the Bob Hope and the JFK and all these cool Buffy the Vampire 12 inch figures. Plus there's ornate dioramas. I mean, everywhere I look, look, there's stuff all over the place here. We have filled up almost the entire back area of the whole auction house with stuff. Can you believe how much was in that house? I guess I shouldn't be amazed by this since I do this all the time, but this is sort of one genre, monster stuff, and it's enough to fill an entire store. But I brought down, I think, almost 500 things to auction. This will sale will be happening at the end of August, and uh, boy should be an interesting sale. So if you're into monster stuff, you got to check out that one. It should be a good one. Some surprises were MC Hammer. So random. It even comes with a cassette of his uh, music. <laughs> Still in the package. It's Hammer Time. Remember Hammer Pants? Um, some early 80s toys like Predator and Terminator. Uh, Wayne Gretzky, for some apparent reason. Muhammad Ali. Um, there were a few things that were different, but I'd say my favorite that I brought down, probably the monster figures. I mean, who doesn't like the original monsters? Such a fun show. All the Walking Dead figures, Predator, Sarcophagus. Um, the stuff that's here, uh, including these sort of uh, underground garage resin kits, which are incredibly detailed that you just kind of, you paint yourself and they turn out remarkable. Like actually they end up looking kind of like that after you paint them up. Those are uh, true underground artist sort of things. Really, really neat collection of them and not easy to come by. A lot of these things were done in very, very small numbers. So to uh, come across them like this, you know, when some guy's making these things, carving them in his garage and shipping them out, you know, <laughs> hard to find. Uh, but monsters galore, uh, even Jackie Chan, the Dragon Lord, and the Universal Monsters, just X-Files. This was kind of a funny one. Well, I shouldn't say funny. The abducted smoking alien. He's just hanging out and they're smoking a cigarette. Just looks bummed out. Universal language of being bummed out. Um, boy, there's an awful lot of stuff. And even tons of these loose figures. And we talk about detail. I look, Ghost Rider. He's got a working leather jacket. Real chains. The whole deal. Well, I guess it's probably vinyl, but still, it's really, really neat. There's just so much cool stuff. I think someone's going to have a lot of fun bringing some of this stuff home in August. But thanks for watching today's episode, guys. Boy, it took me a whole week to get this all done. Don't forget to check out the auction. If you're into monster figures, if you're into really cool stuff like this, you gotta check out the auction sale. It's gonna be happening in August at kauctions.ca. Check out Castner Auctions. As for me, I'm headed back to the store. We now have a mini monster diorama museum basically happening at the shop, and uh, I hope people find it interesting when they go by. So thanks for watching. We'll see you all soon, and as always, bye for now.